Who here is a Netflix user? Great. All right. That's what I love to see. Um, the Netflix model is pretty simple. When you go in, you get merchandise, a list of genres, and within those lists of genres, we recommend you a list of titles. So let's try using Map and Filter and Concat all to get a list of your favorite Netflix titles. Here's how you would do it. So I'm going to create a function called get top rated films, and that's going to accept a user object. And every user object has a video lists array, and that's just the array of genre lists that you saw earlier, the action movies, thrillers. We're going to map over all of those video lists, and before we return the video list, we're first going to filter it to make sure all of the videos, we're only returning videos with a rating of five. Now, because for every video list, notice we're returning another collection, right? Notice the function being passed to map returns video list.videos, which is another array. That means we have a two-dimensional array, and so we apply concat all to it to flatten it down into a nice flat list of your favorite titles. Does that make sense? Should we go over that just a little bit? Or, or do we feel pretty good about it? Any questions? Why was it 2D? Why is it 2D? Well, so remember, we're starting with pretty much like, it's, it's kind of like a two-dimensional collection because we got genres, and within that, we have videos. Right? So first, we're mapping over the, the outer array, the genre lists array. And then with that function that we're passing to map, its job is to take each one of those arrays and translate it. And what are we doing? Well, we're just returning the videos array, right? but first, we're just filtering it. And so that means for every array, we're just returning a filtered version of that array. Does that make sense? Technically, it's an object with an array inside of it. That's the video list dot videos. But you get the idea, right? For each one of these video lists, which contains an array, we're returning that array. But first, we're applying a filter to it. And we're just making sure that all the titles are only the titles you've rated highly. And so at the end, up until the concat all line, we have a two-dimensional collection. And the end, we apply concat all. And that's what takes that two-dimensional collection and flattens it into one-dimensional collection of your favorite titles, all the titles with the rating of five. Yeah. So you mentioned that if we have just a normal for loop, it's not going to work asynchronously. Yes. So if we have this, and let's say it starts with three items, and it starts running through, and then after it's done concat all, we get a fourth item. Does it run through again, or can you explain how it works asynchronously? Well, so I'm not going to talk about asynchrony at all yet. Okay. This is just arrays. We are just working with arrays here. So a for loop would work just fine, to be honest. Okay. But we're trying to, what the, the goal of what we're doing here and why we're talking about arrays at all is we're trying to take a data structure you guys are already familiar with and feel comfortable with yeah. and learn how to use these functions over this data structure yeah. before we tackle a very different, but not so different, data structure where we introduce asynchrony. Okay. So it's just arrays. Okay. Okay. You can try this right now. I'm with you. So now I'm going to... What, well, I'm going to ask you a question, which is, what if I told you you could write nearly the same code to build a drag and drop event? So I'm going to show you a little preview of what we're going to be covering and what you can do if you start to get good writing programs with these few simple functions. You can take them and not just use them for arrays, but also on asynchronous data sources like events. So I want you guys to look really carefully, because if you blink, you're going to miss it. Okay, so here we are. We're processing your favorite titles. And here <laughs> is how you build a mouse drag. I want you to notice the structure of this code is almost the same. What is a mouse drag? Right? Well, it's all of the mouse moves that happen between a mouse down and a mouse up. Right? Imagine for a second that events weren't this weird thing that you call with an, like an add event listener and a remove event listener, this sort of quasi object hanging off of a DOM. What if they were first class values that you could hold on to just like arrays? And they had methods on them, just like map and concat all and filter for that matter. We could actually compose together events to build new, more complex events using these methods. So imagine we have a collection of all of the mouse downs on a DOM element from now until eternity. And we can just map over it. And we map over all of the mouse downs that happen on a DOM element, like a button, for example. And every single time we get a mouse down, we then return with it, we map over it, and for each mouse down, we return all of the mouse moves that are detected on the document level. 
The reason why we listen to the document level is we're looking for, for bubbling, right? So when I start moving around a button, my mouse might go faster than the button. And so by the time I've begun a drag operation, we want to be listening at the document level for mouse moves, just in case my mouse gets ahead of the button so that we can move that button around. Hopefully that's clear. So we're, li we're literally replacing, because what map is all about, it's about replacing. So for every item in a collection, we want to replace it with the result of this function. So in this case, we're replacing the actual mouse down event, that little event object you would get if you did an add event listener, with all of the mouse moves from now until eternity. But instead of just returning that whole collection, which would go on forever, in the previous example, we saw that we use filter to take a certain a collection and reduce the number of items inside of it. Here, we're going to replace the filter method with a take until method. All that does is it takes some stream and another stream, and it listens to the source of some stream of information, an event, mouse moves in this case, until another stream fires. So I might be listening to a mouse moves event and a mouse up event. And I'm just going to keep forwarding on all those mouse moves until the mouse up event happens. And then I'm going to unsubscribe from both the mouse moves and the mouse up. So what we've done is create a collection. We've taken two collections which will go on for eternity. And we've actually combined them to create a collection that ends. Because we listen to one collection until the other one fires. And that's what take until does. So just like filter reduce the number of items in the collection, Take until reduces the number of items in the collection. What it does is it creates a collection of all the mouse moves until the next mouse up. And then the whole collection ends. So for every single mouse down, we're going we're gonna to return, we're going to replace that mouse down object in the stream with another stream of all the mouse moves until the next mouse up. Now notice that I've taken every item in a collection and I've replaced it with a collection, which means I have how many dimensions of collection? So if I take one, two, three, and then I replace each one of those items with another array. So I have an array of 5, 6, comma, 9, an array of 9, 7, comma, an array of 4, 8. How many dimensions is my collection? Two, right? Because every, every mouse down object that we got, we replace with a stream of all the mouse moves until the next mouse up. And so how do we flatten a two-dimensional collection? Concat all. Yep. There's a question, where did concat all come from? So, we, concat all doesn't exist on the JavaScript array. We're going to write it ourselves later. Uh, right? And it does exist on this data type, the magical data type I'm going to teach you about that lets you code this way. Because obviously, this, is, this won't work over arrays. right? You can't model an event as an array. Just not possible to do in JavaScript. Because for one thing, events go on forever. So you'd run out of memory if you tried to do that. right? So I'm going to teach you a new data type later on with the exact same APIs that I'm going to teach you to use over arrays. And so we're going to introduce concat all onto array today in our exercises. And then later on, we'll show you how to write concat all over the data type that I'm going to reveal to you very, very shortly, which is what makes this possible. But we can see that structurally, at the, at the same level, if we just think about events as a collection, we should be able to do this. So the top half of this slide is all about taking the events that we have in our system, the primitive events that we have in our system, and composing them together to create more complex events. Now, this is something we do with functions all the time, right? You take function A, function B, Call them to, you know, compose them together to create function C. You create function C, which calls A and B. But for some reason, when JavaScript programmers do event-based programming, they don't do the same sort of compositional style. And that's wrong. We should approach events with the same sort of approach to composition that we do with functions. And that's what I'm going to teach you how to do today. It's a very powerful technique for controlling the complexity involved in asynchronous programs. I think you're going to be really shocked by what we're able to do with just a few simple functions. So the top half of this slide is just creating the stream of mouse drags, actually creating technically a function which, when given a DOM event, will return a stream of all of the future mouse drags that happen on that DOM element. In other words, all the uh, mouse moves that happen between a mouse down and a mouse up. Now, that's the top half of this slide. All we've done is we've created a stream when a function gets called. The bottom half of this slide actually uses for each to consume the data inside of the stream and do something with it. Increasingly, you're going to see as you write code, your code will begin to bifurcate into two parts, building the collection that you want and then consuming the data in that collection and doing something with it. The bottom half of this slide is morally equivalent to add event listener. It turns out that adding an event listener isn't so different than for eaching over an array. What are you really doing? You're just consuming each item in a collection as it comes in and doing something with it. Right? So here, in this particular case, we're actually going to move the position of the image so that it actually drags around. And you're actually going to see this code in action later on. It's pretty impressive. <laughs>